Edu. Parents sure have their hands full, and they could use an extra hand. Now, every state offers free or low-cost health insurance for your sports hero or budding artist. Kids up to age 19 can get checkups, doctor and dentist visits, hospital care, prescriptions, and more. Your child may qualify based on your family size and income. It's one less thing to worry about. Call or go online for more information. Fios One Sports, the Star Ledger, and NJ.com present the New Jersey State High School Game of the Week. Fios One, bringing you the world outside your door. The Star Ledger and NJ.com, everything Jersey. Verizon Files won the Star Ledger. NJ.com present the Newark National Invitational from Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey. It's a top 20 matchup featuring the Gil St. Bernard's Knights with a record of 12 and 3, taking on the St. Peter's Prep Marauders, who check in at 14 and 2. Well, hello again, everybody. I'm John Hester alongside Michael Korn as we have a battle between number 11 and number 17, St. Peter's and Gil St. Bernard's, respectively. But a key piece will be missing in Tyus Battle not able to play tonight. Yeah, I mean, Tyus does everything for the Knights, John. He brings the ball up. He scores the ball. He defends. He will be surely missed. But they do have other players to back him up, and they have been stepping up in his absence. He's been out of about a week and he'll probably miss another week we take a look at a big player six foot seven and jonas stackalinas yeah, jonas does a lot of good things he's excellent out on the perimeter he'll set his teammates up he really does a good job of getting to the rim and he's long enough to defend better and he may make some steals get some deflections and get the action going the other way yeah the lithuanian nationally traditional european player for st peter's prep a player we've seen a couple times already on files that's austin white the leader of their team well, austin white just is a complete player great with the basketball can get to the rim hit a shot will really be a tenacious defender does a great job for the marauders and he really makes them go well we're short tyus battle st peter's freshman hit hard by the flu bug but the boys are out and they're ready to go it's the newark national invitational the marauders and the knights coming up next if you're watching new jersey high school basketball brought to you by verizon files one the star ledger and nj.com Everybody, it's Hallie O'Brien here at Camelback, hanging out behind this camel's back. Camelback celebrating their 50th anniversary. Congratulations, by the way. First timers, definitely check out the terrain-based learning area here. They take the fear out by adding the fun in and shaping the snow in certain ways. It's a great time. And when you're done being an expert beginner, you can head over to the largest snow tubing park in the country. The biggest and best powder is falling close to home with over a foot and a half of fresh snow from these two storms this week. Shawnee and here at Camelback both have great events to fight breast cancer this weekend. It's Paint the Mountain Pink at Shawnee. The first 200 skiers, riders, or tubers get a pink headband. And don your pink and shred the love at Camelback's Boarding for Breast Cancer this Saturday. Hey, what day is it? Pump day! <laughs> Stop by the top of Margie's, take a picture at the frame for a photo op of the Camelback 50th anniversary. Hashtag frame memories. Good job, Chuck. I don't want to give you a big head, but you were great. Sugar Bush has their Junior Castle Rock Challenge. Kids 13 and under compete on some of the most extreme moguls at Sugar Bush. If you're looking to get away for a bit, the Stowe Mountain Lodge has you covered with one of the finest ski and stay experiences you'll find in the East. Of course, the fresh snow just makes it better. Heading up for another run, but thanks for watching the snapshot. We'll see you next week. Listen carefully. First American Student Aid can now help consolidate your federal student loan. That's right. First American Student Aid can help lower your monthly payment on federal government student loans. Call us today and let us review your situation and work towards consolidating your federal student loans. In many cases, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. 
It doesn't matter how much you owe, how far behind you are on payments, or even if you're in default on your federal student loans. Just call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. And find out how we could stop the harassing phone calls, stop the wage garnishments, and even stop the tax liens. We'll remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your student repayments, and stop wage garnishments today. Stop worrying. Call us now. We can help. Call the number on your screen today to find out how we can help. Today's game is brought to you by Watch ESPN. Live ESPN on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Watch ESPN. It's the other way to watch ESPN. Go to www.fiostvonline.com for details. As we return to Essex County College, the Newark National Invitational, the Knights and the Marauders, 17 and 11 respectively. Getting set to do battle. And we take a look at the starting lineups for the respective squads. Each team potentially shorthanded. Harrison Demaria, Adam Matola, and J.M. Maya are in the backcourt. Ian Demers and Jonas Stakalinas, who we highlighted in the open, to make up the front court for the Marauders. This is definitely a different starting lineup than we expected. Austin White, Nathaniel Pierre Lewis, Sean Ryan, Jordan Whitehead, and Vic Ticino. Noticeably ap absent is Veer Singh, who is suffering from the flu, as is head coach Todd Dector. There is Mergen Cena in his fourth season as head coach at Gil St. Bernard's. A very successful tenure, very active man on the sidelines, and there is the flu-ridden Todd Decker. You can tell he doesn't look himself, and his team has been hit hard as well with the flu bug. Yeah, I talked to Todd a little bit before the game, and, and uh, he says, <laughs> how you doing? He says, you know, Micah, uh, not too well. And he said, I got the flu, some of my guys have the flu, so <laughs> he is hurting. And then you said it, John, so he, he, his face just showed it all, you know what I mean? And, and uh, he's gotten it out, though. <laughs> we take a look now at the Verizon 411 keys to the game. Well, the Knights have to play through injuries, as does St. Peter's, and then they must rebound the ball. A lot of times when you have some guys down, and they're down two or three guys, you have to rebound the ball. You can't depend on anybody. Go get it. And St. Peter's prep, share the ball. They like to play fast, but share the ball and move that ball around and then challenge shots defensively. You do not want to give open shots from the perimeter to the Knights. They are officials for this evening's contest. We're about to get this thing started. And it is won by St. Pete, Jim Boylan, Jack Baum, and Joe Calvano. The three officials in charge of keeping order amongst the young men. St. Peter's, the designated home team. They're going from right to left on their television screen in all white. As that jumper from White gets things going. Yeah, right you get nothing. the ball in the middle, John. You know, you go to side to side. Austin White open from the right side. Nails that jumper. And you see that pressure by St. Peter's. A little full court, little not token so much as maybe to try to get a turnover. Oh, good ball movement, but Jacino it'll be off him, and it'll stay with the Knights. But good straight man-to-man -man defense by St. Peter's to try to set a little bit of a of a nice defensive tone here. Shot is good. J.M. Maya. Yeah. Maya off an inbounds play. I love, and I've said this a million times when we do these broadcasts, these baseline out of bounds these coaches have are remarkable. They always get an open shot. 3-2, Knights on top. This is a, a Knight team that has struggled from the perimeter up until just recently. Had 14 threes last night in a win over Immaculata. But up until then, they've really struggled from the line. And this is a team that last year and the year prior would make double-digit threes with right. great regularity. Yeah, it was just a normal thing for them. Well, you have to like Kreps' tough man-to-man -to -man defense so far. Pierre Lewis, the freshman, applying some of the pressure and coming up with a steal, a two-on-one. Draws the foul. Yeah. Pierre Lewis gets the steal, and as he dribbles down the floor, everything's good here until the defense comes down. Watch how the defense just knocks down right there. That's your foul. And a good call by the official sends Pierre Lewis to the line. Would you like to see the young man bounce that to his teammate on the... I, I would love the extra pass, John. And 
And now that you coach now, you, you like that extra pass also. Oh, I we see. love it. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> coach Decker, his talented freshman on the line, has improved greatly. One thing you learn, all lefties are pretty good shooters. And Pierre Lewis, a lefty, and not a bad shooter at all. Look at his defense. That's spectacular. Cicino applying the pressure on Stackelinus. Three ball rattles out. Cicino with the board. And that's his game, Cicino. He, he likes to clean things up down there. There's your extra pass. Jordan Whitehead moved the ball all the way around. Casino double teamed along the baseline. Held possession. It'll remain prep basketball. Yeah, Vic is mad at himself. You know, he puts the ball down. That lets the guards come down and make the steal. You, you turn 6-7 into 5-5 five, five when you do that, when you put the ball on the floor. Rolls out of bounds. It'll remain prep basketball. And the Knights defensively here seem to be in a zone, a 2 3, 3 2 variety. Certainly on the baseline out of bounds, they zone up. White and Adam Matola, the sophomore. White's three, rims out. And that's a good shot by Austin White. Against the zone, you're open, top of the key area. Just didn't go down for him. Todd Decker's over there in a the defensive stance. The coach at St. Peter's, he wants the five violation, and he gets it. Starting to feel better. <laughs> <laughs> Second turnover, and you see Singh sitting at the end of the bench, hydrating there, and the timeout is taken. A 30-second timeout taken by Gil St. Bernard's. Yeah, that young man, just he doesn't look too well. <laughs> I'm surprised he made the trip. A little Ronnie Cycli in him, John. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is pregame, and uh, he just did not seem to have any bounce in his step. Seemed like he was gasping for air a little bit, too, just, you know, in warm-up. So, I mean, he's giving the juice away. He should maybe take that juice. Six, seven sophomore forward who's, whose game is continuing to improve. He impressed us yeah. over a cane with his athletic ability. And he's improved since that time, and that's a that's a big loss. Now, we've got St. Benedict's prep and St. Peter's prep on Monday night, so I'm sure you don't want to play him tonight and have him be even more run down and lose him for two nights. Right, exactly. Boy, what an out of bounds after timeout play. The lob against the zone, you get behind it, and a beautiful pass and finish down there by Khalid Bishop. Bishop, another player who has been improving. He was a guy that Decker said would be dangerous when he begins to understand the game. He's beginning to understand the game. Floater no good. Baseball pass, White saves it. Pierre Lewis, the southpaw, no good. Yeah, nice drawn kick. Just not be able to nail the shot. Whoa. One of those unforced turnovers. This the beautiful pass right at the rim and Bishop. Nothing else to do with it, John. Just go ahead and flush it down there. But thank you, Passer. Yeah, folks are mostly impressed with the dunker on those plays, but the hard part is the passer. Yeah. I mean, especially when it's right there, that's gravy. To Julius Stoma, another Lithuanian national. Hey, the Knights just don't look comfortable with the basketball right now. It's, it's slipping out of their hands. There, there's five violations. Oh, we got a shoe tie there. I thought it might have been a violation. So this will be a side out, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a team that's put on prolific offensive displays over the past couple of years. Of course, Jaron Cena, Morgan's son, who's now at Seton Hall. Playing quite a bit as a sixth man, and Alex Matolo is at Princeton. Those guys, they would extend yeah, the floor. Matola. Yeah, they're a fantastic player. Trying to backfill that talent. And showed glimpses last night of what they can be. And they've been banged up. Tyus Battle not being here 
all the attention he draws. Cut by Demarest. Bishop called for the goaltend. Yeah, hit the backboard first, and then Bishop knocks it again. So there's your goaltending. Good call by the official. And good movement by the Knights to get some very tough defense by St. Peter's. That young man can get up in the air. And a play like that, John, might take its toll later. You get a little bit of hesitation from the offense to go against Bishop down there. Could be a message sender. Three ball is no good. Sean Ryan. 5-5 five, five our score, three and a half to go first quarter. In the corner, three is good. Harrison DeMaria. What a beautiful shot from the corner. And I like the way the Knights are pushing the ball up the floor against that pressure defense on St. Peter's. Gill shooting it at a 60% clip, St. Peter's 33. Bishop along the baseline avoids a double team. Pierre Lewis. Tried to stuff that one in the middle, stolen away. Yeah, just nowhere to go with it. That could be a backcourt violation there. White with the easy bucket. He has four, and it's 8-7. And the Marauders' defense is relentless. They really get into you. They just try to wear you down. Four turnovers committed by Gill. Floater no good. Ball was tapped out. Ian Demarest comes up with it. Contesting every single pass of St. Peter's. Tough shot. Maya. Yeah, nice little floater by Maya. Yeah. Todd Decker wants to get a timeout, John. He wants to talk it over. He sees some things out there he's not happy with. Yeah, look, you know this floating variety. You, you get the defense, you know that Bishop's back there, you just float it over him. Nice play by Mia. And uh, this is a very different club from Morgan Cena. Kind of an offensive whiz, if you will. He loves the three ball. And it's a team that's defensively doing a great job, holding teams to an average of less than 50 points per game. So they've been winning ugly, which is not the Knights' way normally, but right. having to figure out a way to win. And you look at the, uh, the top 20, St. Peter's, at number 11 and Gill at 17. And Don Bosco Preppel, we saw early in the season, well, they have been cruising. Yeah, we, uh, they beat Hudson Catholic, who's seven. And, and uh, you know, Jorgensen, a uh, very good player. I think he's going down to George Washington. So they have a Division One player that likes to carry them, offensively at least. So Bosco moving up, as you say, John, in the rankings. And Hudson Catholic improving with each passing game. Had a chance to see them beat St. Raymond's. I went down to Hudson uh, last Sunday. They really look good. The lob ends up going off the fingers of Naja Hunter and in. Yeah, it's another good pass there. And Todd Decker drew that play up. You see something against his own and it makes a nice play. Look at this back door. Boy, offensive clinics going on right now. Adam Atola answers right back. 12-9 our score. Minute 45 to go, first quarter. Shot was blocked from behind. Well, Austin White had nowhere to go. Long three. Weak side board tracked down by White. Good draw and kick. There's your extra pass. Just wasn't ready to shoot it. And you can see at the top of your screen a very active Mergen Cena as we've become accustomed to. Oh, you gotta love the defense. You gotta love the patience on offense. And just when players go to the floor, it's a beautiful thing to see. Adam Matola called the timeout. Dove on the floor and called it. There's your alley loop again. See, you get behind the defense in the zone. If you, you're in an area, if you don't see the nice screen set there too, so beautiful play. Todd Decker using some good screens against the zone to get some good layup lob passes. As we come to you from Essex County College, this is the Newark National Invitational. Traditionally, or most recently, have been played at the Prudential Center. Number 17 and number 11, Gil St. Bernard's and St. Peter's Prep. Of course, all the Super Bowl activity going on in and around the surrounding area. Morgan Cena Club is 12 and 3, kind of piecemealing things together. Three losses have come against some pretty good teams. Uh, I know Hudson was one of them. Uh, I think they lost to Benedict, too, maybe, and then some team from Pennsylvania. They play a very hardy schedule. 
I'm sorry, it was Teaneck. I just looked at my notes, John. I do bring notes. <laughs> Under a minute to go, first quarter. 12-9. The Knights on top by three. And Prep, St. Peter's Prep goes into a little bit of a zone type defense, so the Knights very comfortable maybe to get the last shot of the quarter. Quicken the game up a little bit when you stall like this. Right elbow jumper is no good. Ryan the rebound. Yeah, I thought they might hold, but Pre Prep's defense forced him into a tough shot. Well, you just gotta, I'm sorry, John. You just got to love when you get the ball in the middle. Good things happen. Boston Roche, the field goal. One-point game. Down to 10 seconds as they don't waste much time dribbling the basketball. Well, they, you know, in practice, coach, he just wants that ball moved and get shots like that. Wow. At the buzzer, Adam Matola. How's that for a possession? Certainly good. Like you said, not too much dribbling. Good passing around the perimeter. Nail the three. So some acrobatics above the rim has kept Prep in it, but it's Gill with the lead after one, 15-11. When you're driving along and your cell phone rings, do your eyes instantly go off the road? Then you need to get a grip. Hi, David Jones here with the new GripGo, the most versatile hands-free mount that will instantly grip any phone for safe driving. Just attach the suction cup to your windshield or dash and GripGo grabs your phone ultra fast. Then it peels right off. And don't worry, there's no sticky residue left behind. The 360 degree pivoting mount allows you to always get the perfect viewing angle. It's even strong enough to grab and hold this expensive smartphone out the window. Yet it comes right off with ease. That's the advantage of GripGo. You can get the amazing GripGo with dashboard mount for only $14.95. We'll send you a second kit free. Just pay separate processing and handling. Get two complete GripGo systems for just $14.95. To order GripGo for $14.95 plus processing and handling, call 1-800-310-1894 or order online at getgripgo.com. Did you see they killed off last night? Wait, no, no, I still need to get him. Did it. Got him twice in the head. Oh, yeah. Guys, you want to see get shot by no. Yeah. Oof. Oh. Ooh. Don't let others spoil the hottest shows and movies. See them first when you get premium channels like Stars for 50% off for 12 months. Visit channel 860 to order now. How about what happened to all? Oh, let's watch that again. Yeah. Oh. Keeping up with the entertainment that's got everyone talking. That's powerful. New Jersey, you like us. You really like us. They like me. They like me. When you like Fios One on Facebook, you can become part of our family. When you like us, you'll get important news and weather updates. And when you like us, you'll be the first to know about everything going on in your community. Plus, you can answer our question of the day. Like us, New Jersey. They like me. They like me. Fios One News. We like you. Now go like us on Facebook. Fios One News, New Jersey. Breaking news this morning out of Hackensack, a major water main break. Exclusive stories. It is a Fios One News exclusive. Law enforcement launched the largest crackdown ever on buses in northern Jersey. Weather on the ones. Winter weather advisories are posted through 10 a.m. Isolated black ice issues in the morning. Our exclusive beat the traffic report. All lanes are shut down. And Fios One Sports. It's on Fios One News, only on Channel One. Back at Essex County College, Gill on top, 15-11. They were up 12-11, but that final possession of the first quarter, a clinic leading to a three. Yeah, it's a zone against a zone, so look at this. There's no dribble, and it's passing in the middle. Right back out. Let's move it back. Maybe one dribble there to get back into the middle of the floor. And then you get your open three, find the open man, and nothing but net, and that's why you have the lead now at 15-11. At and Coach loves it. Look at that smile. A little crack smile there, John. <laughs> <laughs> he is an animated man. 15-11. Gill on top. White lost his footing. Matola called for the travel. Good recovery by White. Yeah, he, he, he forced that walk. I mean, he was just in him, fell down, and then gets right back up and forces the travel violation. Fifth turnover committed by the Knights.
Only two turnovers for St. Peter's. And you notice it with St. Peter's a little bit more dribbling in during their possession. But still an open three that Austin White just doesn't get to go down. Sakalitis. Coming out of the pack is Maya. And Demarest hits the three. Yeah, open in the corner. A good push after all the action. And Demarest open in the right corner. And another three. 18-11, Gill on top. No Tyus battle for Gill with the injured wrist. It's a fracture. She'll be back in a week. No Veer Singh, the effects of the flu. Don't know if we'll see him at all. That's a three. Front iron, no good. Long rebound tracked down by Matola. And Gil St. Bernard's very happy to stay in his zone and let St. Peter shoot from the perimeter. Now this is the only thing, John, on misses, do they go back to his own? Yeah. Animated Knights bench over there. There's the push by St. Peter's, and let's see. Well, where I'm sitting, it looked pretty good, John. It sure did. <laughs> the officials are over there, though. Again now, the Knights go into that zone. 2-1-2, two, 2-3, two, two, whatever you want to call it. They're, let St. Peter's take their perimeter shots. That ball off the leg. Turnover by St. Peter's. They're fourth. Another foul on Jordan Harris. You know, the thing that's interesting to me, Mike, and they don't look like a very athletic bunch, Gil. They never really do. Not to say that they don't have good athletes, but right. they play the game so smartly and they're so well coached, they seem to make up for that. Whatever right. the difference it, is in yeah. athletic ability. Yeah, they, it, it, you know, they, they they move it. You know, they, they, they play solid defense. They'll sit in the zone if they think you cannot shoot from the perimeter. Um, you know, they play the game the right way, as a, a Larry Brown would say, great coach, Hall of Fame coach. And their, their patience is good. This is a tenacious defense by Prep. I mean, this is no joke out there. They move their feet. They move their hands. They challenge shots like that. But, again, it's just, as you say, it's good movement. And they get their shot, and they're quick with the release. Julius Stoma sinks it. There you go. There's your movement against the zone. You make penetration. The defense collapses. You get to the open man, and you take a shot around the free throw line. I mean, you can't drop a play better than that. Nine-point lead for Gill. And then when you start to make shots, John, you know this, your defense gets better. You talk. You, you're into it. You, you, you're not missing shots like you're missing shots like St. Peter's. You know, the basket seems to, you know, get, get a little tighter. Todd Decker does a good job here. He calls time. He sees his team not really doing much offensively, so he wants to make another play. He wants to call another after timeout play to try to get something easy. He's got a young bunch over there. 20-11 to 11 the score. Gill, number 17 in the state. St. Peter's number 11. St. Peter's, of course, with a game on Monday night against St. Benedict's Prep. The schedule just continues to get tough for these guys. I mean, they don't, they play everybody. So one of the things, you know, see the uh, Knights here, 12 and 3, averaging 61 points per game, allowing, again, under 50 points a game. Yeah, that's part good defense, John. That's part very patient offense by Gill. Eight for 15 from the floor is Gill. That's a good point. It's almost like an offensive team in football. Ball control, you can play keep away by possessing right. the ball down the other end. I was, just, I was watching, uh, reading an article about the Super Bowl. Bill Parcells said he did that against the Bills that year when they won it. They held the ball for over 40 minutes. A high-powered Jim Kelly offense was sitting on the sidelines. That's a great shot. I mean, it just didn't go in, but you're getting the shots you want. Hunter kicks it for Pierre Lewis. Jacino threw it off a leg of Maya. All teams need a Vic Jacino, number 55 there in white. He, he, he's a hustler. He defends. He rebounds. He's, he's very unselfish. Does a lot of the so-called dirty work. White thought about it for a second. Cross-court pass. No good. Held possession, and it will be Knights basketball. 
Again, prep. St. Peter's prep doing a great job getting shots. Just, you know, just not going in. And on the other end, the Knights getting good looks and burying them. Somewhere along the line, I think, John, Prep's defense is going to have to manufacture some offense. You know, when your shots are not going down like they are, you, you, you have to get some type of offense. And settling for those threes that, that might not be doing it. Matola almost had it knocked away from behind. As we approach four minutes to go in the first half, tough shot. Scooping in for the rebound was Stoma. Held possession this time. The arrow favors St. Peter's. That's where St. Peter's defense collapsed, forced a tough shot, and then off the jump ball, they get the ball back. So they got to stop relying on this perimeter shot and start going into some. Uh, their, their field goal percentage is awful. I know their shots are open, but sometimes you might have to force it down the lane. And Gill, on the other hand, is at 50 percent. Hunter, the head fake, spins along the baseline. Some contact, no foul. He may have gotten away with a walk as well. And Jacino is going to be called for the loose ball foul. Just a very tentative to put the shots up. It's only the second team foul against St. Peter's. Only one for Gill thus far. Yeah, it's been a clean, cleanly played game. Not many whistles. You know, certain turnovers, but this is where Prep has to do it. Defensively, they have to start to force some turnovers and get some easy buckets the other way. 3.25 to go, first half. Gill on top by nine. And a steal by Ryan and a foul. And actually, a good foul by the Knights. That would have been a three on one going the other way. Stoma picks up the personal. Again, GSB goes into that zone. Well, White he's, draws yeah, the foul. He's, he's forcing it. Just at least he got into the paint. And you get your point guard in the paint there to get to the free throw line. And this is where you get your shit. Yeah, the clock stops. You get to the line. Settle down some, you make two, and then you set your defense up to try to create some more havoc. St. Peter's has not scored in this second quarter until now. Uh, good way to do it, John. You know, those perimeter, we talked about their percentage, and there you go, John. <laughs> Going to give it a, the old yeah, college try. Yeah. And that might be more the player than, than Todd Decker, the coach. You, you know, he sees his team struggling. You know, he's a good teammate. He wants to play. So Veer is in there. Yeah, you know, I, I'm sure you can probably get some energy going for short spurts. So we've got three minutes left in the half. Maybe push it out for a little while and get some rest and try the same thing in the second half. That shot was short. Offensive rebound, Demarest. May a three ball, no good. And a rebound, Bishop. We'll see if Singh's presence ignites a spark. White out of control, lost the ball. Very fortunate that it went out of bounds off GSB. And I agree. Uh, a good call there. I mean, Prep not shooting the ball well, so Austin White taking upon himself, forces the action. Give the assist to Veer Singh. The bucket for Austin White. He has eight. Four straight from St. Peter's. They're back within five at 20 to 15. So Austin White... The veteran he is goes to the free throw line, gets some, and then gets one there. There's a three by. Oh boy. Ian Demers for three against the zone. Second three of the game for Demers. He has eight points. Back up to an eight point lead, 23 18. Uh, just think when you think St. Peter's Prep is making it run, Demers buries them with a three. Single try at three. Comes up well short. Save attempt no good by Austin Roche. Yeah. We talked about that fatigue factor with him being ill. And certainly there. He didn't get his legs into his shot. It was very, very short. Thrown away in the backcourt. Yeah. Mia wanted to go without the ball. 
And when he looked up the floor, the ball was out of bounds. Seventh turnover against Skill St. Bernard's. Nice, very comfortable staying in that 2-3, two, 2-1-2 two, two zone. Just want to force prep to shoot from the perimeter. And why not when you get shots like that? St. Peter's has been ice cold from the perimeter. Bishop tried to line up the block, but unable to do so. Julius Stoma has four. Well, take it right to the defense, Stoma. Right to the defense, off the backboard. Here's Singh, steps into a three. That time, too much muscle. He tried to compensate with the air ball and shot it over the basket. AC Singh, he does not look himself for sure, and he will quickly come out. And you can see Decker's like, I can assume that he said, you just don't have it tonight, kid. Yeah, you know, but he's got his feet wet, you know what I mean? And, let them get a little rest. Maybe they'll come with them in the third quarter after a halftime. Boy, there is no good. Boy, John, they have a quick release. GSB, they, they're open. Boy, that thing is going up. Second foul on Stoma. Well, Coach Cena wanted to post me up when we went over to say hello to him. <laughs> That's right. No, those days are over, Coach. <laughs> we wear a tie now. <laughs> <laughs> well, the kind of player that he was at Rhode Island, he he knows about putting the ball in the hole. Not sure he played much defense in his day, but he sure <laughs> could score it. He sat in his own. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure he'd make no qualms about it. He's in his own right now. He's over there with his arms up and talking. And he probably wishes he could stay with the defense down that end at the start of the third quarter. That was a three from Stoma. That's a good shot by Stoma. I mean, they get the stop. They push it up. They get an open shot in transition. That's fine with Coach Cena. Vic Giacino is set to check in along with Stackalinas. But St. Peter's... They're willing to let the clock run down and play for one shot and regroup here with 20 seconds to go. And on the other end, GSB is happy to just sit there and let them take the last shot. And the ball gets turned over, so Gill will get one more crack at it. Seven turnover by St. Peter's. Yeah. It's a little bit of unforced turnover by Pierre Lewis. Just went behind the back and just never came back to him. And this would be really... Uh, Coach Cena's going to call a timeout here to get his last play. And this would be tough for St. Peter's prep if, if Gill gets the shot to go down. So it's a full timeout. That shows you how important coaches and, uh, and Cena, in this case, find a single possession... This timeout is simply to diagram a play for the final seven seconds. Well, well he's over there. He's knowing, he knows that St. Peter's Prep is having a tough time scoring, and he sees a 10-point lead. In a normal way, that's almost like a 15, 16-point lead with, with, you know, 15 points for half of St. Peter's Prep. So he says, if I can get a three here or a quick two, boy, 12, 13 points going up. St. Peter's Prep might be having those heads down yep. coming out to start the third quarter. So he's looking for a little kill punch right here. You know, famous alums from St. Peter's who was shooting six for 20. See George Blaney. Yeah, George Blaney was the first coach at Hudson Catholic. Uh, good guy. Great. Just a just salt of the earth type person right there. Look at those stats, though. He's been around. Will Hill had uh, a solid year with the football giants this year. And he is a free agent. Now the four seconds. There's a shot. They will get a look. And it comes up empty. That will be waved off. Waved off. But out of the timeout, they diagram a play. They comes up with an open shot. And you notice there was a, a three a three ball that they wanted, John. So they were going for a 13-point lead. We are at the half. It's been all Gill. They lead at 25-15. You're watching the Newark National Invitational brought to you by Verizon Files 1, the Star Ledger, and NJ.com. 
Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? Are you struggling to make ends meet because you owe more in taxes than you can afford to pay? The IRS is relentless and will collect from you. They can garnish your wages or place a levy on your bank account. You have rights, and you can stop them by calling the tax resolvers. If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, our qualified CPAs, tax negotiators, and support staff know the law and know how to get your situation under control legally and permanently. Call the number on your screen now, and we will contact the IRS on your behalf. Help you end wage garnishment, stop collection calls, remove tax liens, resolve tax penalties, and reduce the amount you owe if you qualify. It's a free call and a free consultation, but we can only help if you pick up the phone and dial the number below. You wouldn't fix your car without going to a mechanic, so why face the IRS without an experienced company that can help you? If you owe more than $10,000 in back taxes, call now and find out how we can help you resolve your IRS problems. Call the tax resolvers at 800-260-2183. When weather becomes news, no one covers it like Fios One's Weather on the Ones. Brian Fitzgerald. Belvedere feels like 12, Rahway 14. Jeff Denoyer. 29 in West Milford, 31 in Clifton. Fios One's Weather on the Ones tracks weather conditions county by county, town by town, across New Jersey. Your weather with pinpoint accuracy on Fios One, only on Channel One, only on Verizon Files TV, the one place for what's happening in New Jersey. Richard French Live. What we're trying to do is bring the real story to the real person at home. Get your news the way it should be delivered. Exclusive one-on-one interview with mayoral hopeful Anthony Weiner. No gimmicks, compelling. Just the truth behind the headlines. The region, the nation, the world. Conversations that lead to solutions. We'll have all the details coming up at 6 o'clock. Richard French Live. Weeknights at 6 on Fios One. Today's game is brought to you by Watch ESPN, your favorite ESPN sports and shows live anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Watch ESPN. It's the other way to watch ESPN. Go to www.fiostvonline.com for details as we return to Essex County College, site of the Newark National Invitational and Gil St. Bernard's. Their defense is getting it done as well as their patient offensive attack. They lead it 25-15. Let's take a look at the highlights. Yeah, right there. There's some lobs by Prep. I mean, good screens down below the zone. Good screen and then the layups. And that was really the most of their offense was that stuff to the rim where they get dunks or just putbacks. And then coming the other way, just the ball movement and a quick shooting by GSB has been fantastic. They push ahead there, extra pass. Open from the corner, Ian Demers hits a three, and it is more ball movement, and double team comes, open from three, put it up. I mean, they are some quick shooters, John, and and they get some good dividends from their three-point shooting. And they've been shooting the ball better, and they shot it better last night against Immaculata with 14 threes, and doing it again today, shooting just under 50% from both three-point range and from, but look at St. Peter's. Wow, you, you're looking at 0 for 9 from three-point range, and a lot of those are long rebounds, which GSB is just pushing that ball back up the floor, and some of them looks we just watched on the replays. That, that's an 0 for 9 right there. That's, that's tough to recover from. Well, big defensive effort. We'll see if St. Peter's can rally in the second half. They've been hit hard by the flu bug, and they've played like it. Down 10 at the half. Gil St. Bernard's leads it 25-15. Your snoring sounds like a freight train. It's not healthy for you, and it prevents your partner from sleeping at all. But the proven way to eliminate snoring is to widen your airway. That's what dentists do with custom devices, but they cost thousands. Now there's an affordable solution. Introducing Z-Quiet. It's ready to use right out of the box. The soft material and patented flexible hinge provide comfort to stop your snoring the very first night. Try Z-Quiet for 30 days for only $9.95. Stop snoring now. Get Z-Quiet. I actually suffered and still continue to suffer from acne. When I was a kid, acne held me back from looking people in the eye and being assertive with them. It was a hard time for me. 
So that's why I'm here. It is great that there's finally something out there now that works for me. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the breakthrough combination of acne medicine plus advanced skin care. The results are astonishing. Skin is not only clear, but radiant. It's the smartest, fastest, most effective Proactive ever. Proactive Plus is normally $64, but during our nationwide launch, pay just $29.95. Save more than 50%. Proactive Plus works. I use it every single day, and my face is clear. Call the number on your screen now and get this revolutionary new acne system, plus two free gifts, an $84 value, all for just $29.95. It's nice to feel good. Fios One News NJ.com, the best way to get all your hyper local news, weather, and traffic exclusively for New Jersey. Just log on to Fios One News NJ.com and you can follow us on Facebook. Just log on to Facebook.com forward slash Fios One News NJ or follow us on Twitter at Fios One News NJ. Fios One News NJ.com, the one place for what's happening in New Jersey. It's time to play your way with Stars Play and Encore Play. Watch on any computer, smartphone, or tablet. Order now to get instant access to over 1,500 movies and series. Plus, get 24 channels with five in high definition. And it's all free with your Stars and Encore subscription. Upgrade today and get half off the next 12 months. Go to channel 340 to order and get ready to play your way. Third quarter just moments away. And before we proceed, let's revisit the Verizon 411 keys to the game. Yeah, we said uh, the Knights played through injuries. They say they certainly have done that. And rebound and basketball in that zone, they've, they've accomplished that. St. Peter's Prep has shared the ball against that zone, but they just haven't been able to make shots. And then defensively, they've had to challenge these threes. But with that quick release, you know, give, give Gil St. Bernard's a lot of credit there, doing a great job. The inbound will come just in front of our broadcast table. Gill will be heading from right to left on your television screen. Shooting in front of their bench and Prep will be going in the opposite direction. As we are underway in the third quarter, game two of a triple header here at Essex County College. The Newark National Invitational to benefit the Brian Doherty Scholarship Fund. That extra pass leads to an open shot and a basket for Maya. Just the way the second half, I should say the first half ended, the Knights come out, get an open three, and bury it. The thing that's so impressive, the third pass gets you a guy that's open, but the fourth one gets you a guy that's wide open. open. And with that quick release they have, it's fantastic. Thing with a force. And Veer has to realize, just because he's out there, doesn't mean he has to shoot the ball when he's challenged. He, you know, the ball needs to move a little bit out of his hands. Traveling violation, turns the ball over. Eighth giveaway by Gill. <laughs> Naja Hunter checks in. Ryan sits down. Singh stays in the game. Yeah, they got his feet wet in that second quarter, and they start him here to the third. Along the baseline, Jacino throwing his body around will go to the line. And again, Veer Singh, you know, one dribble, two dribble to the corner, bang, bang. Look at the defense collapses to him and puts up a tough shot. But Jacino there and gets himself to the free throw line. And believe it or not, John, I think for St. Peter's Prep to, to get involved, they have to be more aggressive to the rim and get the Knights in some foul trouble and, and get to the free throw line a little bit more. Four boards for Jacino to go along with two points, 28-17. White almost committed a foul. Gill easily breaks the St. Peter's press. He, no, no shot there after they beat the press. Get it back out, work the ball a little bit, work the defense. But like I said, just throw up a three. <laughs> you can do that too. I don't, Cena's got his hands over there. He, he's not happy with that shot. Austin White rises and fires, no good. Chisino goes on to the floor. Oh, no it's... surprise there. I think there'll be a lot of extra passes in this possession after that tough one there by the Knights. Oh, 
Demers free inside. Missed the short one. And the foul's going to be called on Demara. That's a tough foul. I mean, both players going for the basketball. Yeah, look at that nice bounce pass inside. Just doesn't roll in, and there's the tie-up, I thought, but they're going to give Demaria the foul. First foul on Harrison. Stoma has three, so that could be a concern. You know, John, I'm watching here sing. It looks like he got a little pop to his step right now. We'll see. Knocked down as he shoots. And a foul called on Jacino. Touch fouls. Uh, officials are making up for the clean first half. That's right. We had a smooth, smooth, smooth ride. Yeah. And with that foul, Prep does try to set their full court defense. Singh almost came up with a steal. Instead, a three from the corner. Pierre Lewis had it taken away. Cena wanted a foul call along the baseline. I don't blame him. Hunter. Too much one on one play right now for St. Peter's. It's been tough shot after tough shot by St. Peter's. I mean, you know, I know there's so much time. I mean, 531 to go in the third quarter. I know you're down 28 17. I think Todd Decker's thinking about what we were thinking. He's getting a lot of his players out of the game right now. He, he took three out and got three more in. So he's not happy with some things as you make a wholesale substitutions like that. Looking for somebody to provide a spark. It's been a rather sleepy game, which is unusual, especially for Gill. Fouls called on, I think, Jordan Harris, and it is. Yeah. It looks like the offense just fell down. Uh, John Michael Mia, but uh, a little touch foul variety. But the whistles are coming like that now, so the players have to adjust. And it was free and clear in that first half, but the second half, the whistles have been called a little bit more frequently. Second foul on Maya, three to two. St. Peter's with one more foul than Gill. And they slip to the basket, and it goes off the leg of oh, Stackalinus. Yeah, Sean Ryan did a great job for St. Peter's to get in there and knock that ball off the offense, so that looked like an easy layup. The 11-point lead for the Knights, 28-17. Ball was poked away momentarily. Ryan able to recover. And St. Peter's showing some good patience here. And not, not to take away from the zone defense that the Knights are in, but they'll wind up getting a good shot here. Nope. Kicked it out of bounds. Ooh. Benefit of the call there, John. I'd like to see the officials get together. Yeah, it, it's a good call. Ryan did kick that out. Four thirty-seven to go, third quarter. It has been a struggle offensively for St. Peter's. Demarest was in position for the offensive rebound and it's knocked away from behind by Harris. Well, when the Knights get below the free, try, free throw area into the paint, it's just the defense collapses and is so unselfish to make those passes out of that. That's why GSB are getting some good looks at the rim. Blue flare. Left-handed shot is good. Stack of Linus breaks into the scoring column. What a nice play. It was a flare and then a slip and then throw it down inside and a beautiful jump hook with the left hand. Awesome play. Comes in averaging nine a game, eight boards, three assists. That's his first bucket. Here's Singh for three. That one looked much better than the previous ones. And a, a, a touch foul at best on a three-point shot. And, and there we go. There's a nice flare with a slip. And it gets down to Jonas. Watch him work middle and then go with the left jump. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, that, that's some good coaching right there. It's a talented player. A flare. I say a flare. It's a back screen, John, you know, for the people watching. 
And usually when you set a flare and then you roll right to the rim because the defense has a tendency to step out on the person who received the pick. Second, third one rattles out. One of three for Singh. They move the ball quickly. Demers fighting for the rebound. Singh was not expecting that pass. He was getting into position to crash the boards. Yeah. Hunter, Hunter should have went for that shot. That would have been his pass. And it seems like they're a little out of sync, and it's probably score and all the missed shots. There's a tip in for Naja Hunter. He has four points, and it's a 10 point game. And a five second violation. St. Peter's Prep trying to make that run as Todd Decker just barks some more instructions. Let's go. Singh, short baseline jump. One thing about Singh, he's not bashful. Stekalinas, short left-handed hook, no good. And he gets caught for a foul. He knew it, too. Oh, frustrating type fouls. You know, offense really not going anywhere. You reach in and commit one right there. It's sort of a frustrating thing. Missed a shot. It's all foul. So he'll have to sit down with three, and Stoma comes in. He has three. They have four players from the regular rotation that are missing. We've talked about Tyus Battle, but Mike Morial, super freshman, Connor Shorten, and Will Sachs, all unavailable. Rep keeps the ball alive, and a basket for Hunter. They give Austin White a lot of credit. He's the one that kept it alive, John, and gives Prep another chance. Steal in the backcourt, basket for Hunter. Back to back for Hunter, and don't look now, it's a six-point game. And Coach Cena put the stop signs up. He, he just wants them to settle down. I like the way he's letting his players work this out. Good look at a three. It's good. That's a well-coached team right there. You know, under normal circumstances, I think he calls timeout. He lets his players figure it out. He tells them to be patient. They get the open three, and that's what they've been doing. Good play by Prep here to get a layup. Hunter has eight points here in the third quarter. 33-26. Another turnover and one for Austin White. Boy, that pressure defense finally taking its toll on GSP. Turnover and a shot that goes in. Look at his pass. Good thing Singh makes a nice pass. And he's happy about that make, as is Austin White. Well, that was a 13-point game, opening minute of play. As you see him guzzling. It looks like a Gatorade of some kind. Yeah, that colorful Gatorade over there. 11-3 run. Getting all those electrites, or whatever the heck they are. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so now it's a four-point game. Austin White has 11 points. You know, it's funny, John. We talked about it before. Their, their defense has to pick up their offense, and they're on a 12-3 run. A lot of it because of the defense. Offensive foul. Well, that's a tough call because the defense is on the side of the offense. He must have pushed off with that off hand. Let's see. There's that right hand and that again. And right there. Good call by the official. You know, when you see the defense on the side, it's tough to get an offensive foul unless that guy pushes off, and he certainly did. And he pushed off on numerous occasions. It wasn't though it was one shove. Four point. Knights lead. You see what shots going down does for St. Peter's now. They get a lot more patient, although they travel there, and it's a good call. But after they get this thing down to 33-29, you know, it's more patience. 
And that's what they need. Certainly a ton of time left in this ballgame. The intensity on the floor has ratcheted up as well. You have, to, you have to call those high screens out. You're going to get a player hurt out there. The big guy setting the screen defensively has to call that screen out. Fifty seconds left. The three is short. Austin Roche up ahead. Austin White kicks it to the corner for Singh. And an offensive White. foul called yeah. on White. Yeah, out of control. Uh, defense is stationary. Takes the shot, and it goes the other way. Turnover to a foul for Austin White. Forty seconds remaining, third quarter. Things have tightened up. Home, see that right there. You got to call it out. Veer Singh guarding the screen. It has to call out. They stepped out of bounds. Another chance for St. Peter's to chisel this lead down further with 34 seconds to go. See, to break pressure, Coach Cena has one of his bigs set a screen for the guard to loosen things up, and St. Peter's is not talking defensively, and you're going to get someone hurt. If you're going full speed defending, you got to run into a big guy like that. That's hard. So overall, this could be a very productive quarter for St. Peter's. Yeah. I, I didn't know if they had it in them, to be honest, with the way that first half was going. But their defense picked up. They started to make shots, and they started to get a lot more excited. Sing for three. Roche knocks it out of bounds. With 1.3 to go, and St. Peter's will get an inbound play. Ian Demers just couldn't get the ball locked into himself there. Sing now 0 for 9. Doesn't seem to be bothering him. He keeps throwing him up. Oh, nice ball fake. Ooh. That would have been a real shot in the arm for St. Peter's if they could have gotten that one to fall. But as it is, the 13-point deficit early stages third quarter is now just four. Fourth quarter upcoming. You're watching the Newark National Invitational brought to you by Verizon Files for the Star Ledger and NJ.com. On January 31, 1874, the Gads Hill, Missouri train robbery took place by the notorious Jesse James gang. Among the stolen treasures was the conductor's own pocket watch. Legend tells this beautifully handmade timepiece was returned by Jesse James himself to record the event in history. We are proud to present the limited edition Kansas City Railroad Pocket Watch, certified by the American Historic Society. The Kansas City Railroad Pocket Watch features a sturdy butterfly hinge and brilliant silver tone stem watch and stem set for accurate battery-free performance day and night. Now you can celebrate the beauty and intricacy of this astounding timepiece for the low price of $29.99. Available only for a limited time. So call or click now and reserve yours today for the incredible TV price of $29.99. Also available in yellow gold tone. Call 1-800-588-0209 to order your Kansas City Railroad pocket watch. Call 1-800-588-0209. That's 1-800-588-0209. Hey, hmm. I saw Jeff last night. No, 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 wait, I still need to get him. did it. Got him twice in the head. Oh, yeah. Guys, you want to see get shot by yeah. No. Oh. Ooh. Don't let others spoil the hottest movies. See them first when you get premium channels like Epics for 50% off for 12 months. Visit channel 860 to order now. How about what happened on Oh, Ooh, let's watch that again. Yeah, yeah. Keeping up with the entertainment that's got everyone talking. That's powerful. Barry, time is running out. According to my calculations, one in five kids in America struggles with hunger. How can so many children face hunger when there's more than enough food to feed them all? You're right, Barry. We can help solve hunger by teaming up with Feeding America to get food to hungry kids in communities across the country. Help Flint and the Feeding America network of food banks get food to the people who need it in your community. Find your local Feeding America food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Richard French Live. Get your news the way it should be delivered. Just the truth behind the headlines. We're trying to bring the real story to the real person at home. Richard French Live. Weeknights at 6 on Fios 1. 
Today's game is brought to you by Watch ESPN. Live ESPN on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Watch ESPN. It's the other way to watch ESPN. Go to www.fivestvonline.com for details. We return to Essex County College. John Hester and Michael Korn, the rest of the Verizon Files 1 sports team. And we had a game that was sort of lifeless. And a 13-point spread for Gil St. Bernard's, but wholesale substitutions by Todd Decker, and he's gotten a spark. He certainly did. He took three out, put three in, and things changed when he did that. And the Knights go back to that zone. Been pretty, in it pretty much the whole night. Here's Singh just dying for that basketball. He's putting it up. Man, he was at one for ten now, but in his mind, he's one for one. You know, he's a, he's a shooter's mentality. It's just that simple. And that's the way he probably has to think, right? No question. Good shooters, or well, scorers, I should say, they just, they just feel the next one's going in. 15-3 run since the opening minute of the third quarter. It's a one-point game. We'll see how Gill responds now. That pass is stolen away. Austin Roche. Pierre Lewis, left elbow too short. Rebound Demarest. Well, Demarest does a good job to put body on body to go after those defensive rebounds. Well, they like to get their bigs up around the elbow area and set screens on the sides for shooters. Boy, they're a patient team, aren't they, John? Incredibly patient. Demarest muscling his way in. Well, Ian Demarest, double zero, goes right. Crap, but you know, better be careful here. Good movement. That would have tied the game. Jump ball. And the arrow favors Gill. Three. Let's watch Ian Demers here. Watch him drive right, straight line drive, and use that little shoulder to get some space and lay it up off the glass. Beautiful move as he travels back down the floor. Yeah, he had a slight size advantage. Certainly weight-wise, he's bigger than Pierre Lewis. Good positioning with his dribble. Kept him, the defense on the side. That's just bad defense by Veer. Silly foul back there in the backcourt. Have to move your feet, John. You, can, you start to move your hands for steals. Boy, it's so wide open for a foul call. 16 fouls for Gill, five for St. Peter's, so we're moving close to the bonus. Demarest for three. That one was way off. Nice pass. Hunter threads the needle to Austin White, and it's a one-point game, 35-34. Even during this run, I'm impressed by the Knights, how they, they stay within their game plan. They continue to move the ball, and they're just looking for that quality look. Strong move, Adam Matola, who's been held scoreless in the second half. He has seven, back up to a three-point lead. And they use their patience, John, and go back to their zone. Good pass by Sink. There you go, good pass. Hold up now, John, I think it's tied. <laughs> 16 points for Austin White. We do indeed have a tie ball game. <laughs> and I, 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 I see this laughing at the ref. He tried to call it for about 20 minutes over there. Finally, the officials see it. Let's watch Beer Singh, who's been, you know, taking his share of shots, but he sees a wide open Austin White, and he nails it over. He gets it to him, and Austin knocks it down to tie this thing up. And you see his excitement after he makes a shot. I mean, that helps your defense when you make shots. Last five games, St. Peter's 5 and 0. Oh. They're on a 20 to 8 run right now, and you see the points per game, defeated Bayonne on the 28th. But one of the things in Hudson County, outside of Hudson Catholic, the competition is not at the level that you're facing here. So right. since the last time we saw Todd and his team, Cardinal Hayes, and today 
hasn't really faced this level of competition. Right. And, and you know, this, this games like this, the tournaments like this, just, you know, now you're almost into February. You played a lot of games, but now you start building for, you know, your, your state tournaments and such. To, to, to win everything, and, and, and these teams will continue to get better playing competition like this. The site is Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey. Number 17, Gil St. Bernard's, and number 11, St. Peter's Prep, John Hester and Michael Corrin. Yeah, this game is certainly heated up. A quiet, almost sleepwalking type first half of basketball, but the third quarter was pretty fiery, and the fourth quarter has been just as. High game at 37. Demarest tries the backdoor pass stolen away by Hunter. White kicks it right side. Pierre Lewis for three. It's good. Oh, St. Peter's Prep making that extra pass. Austin White did it there to Lewis, and he nails it. Harrison Demara ties it back up. He gave the re-sign as he walked by it, right in front of us. <laughs> it's amazing. This is like two totally different halves. Incredible. Unforced error by St. Peter's. So we, we had a first half that wasn't very memorable at all, and now a second half filled with energy. If the people left at halftime, if, you know, and you said, no, man, this game was great. They were making threes. The defense was good. I said, no way. Not after what I saw in the first half. Oh, my goodness. This game is lopsided. J.M. Maya gives Gill a two-point lead. He used two dribbles to get away from the defense and pull up going left. Nice shot by Mia. Coach Zine is going to need a new shirt. He's, he's going through that one. We get a picture of him yeah. down the line somewhere. That shirt is just sweated up. He's working hard over there. This is Sing. Oh, yeah. it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's starting to find that range now. He struggled. Give him a lot of credit playing with an illness. Sing with the acrobatic block. There's a Gill player shaking up. I think it's Maya. Tipped by White. Looking down at Coach Cena over there with the Knights bench. He's barking out a couple instructions. 45-42. Prep by three. Look at that pass. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful pass. Twenty points for Austin White. Twelve here in the second half. A 31-11 run. St. Peter's up by five. 47-42. A foul is going to be called on Austin Roche. And that's just what the Knights needed. I mean, a little stoppage of play. They get a foul from St. Peter's prep. It'll be a baseline out, and Coach Zena will. Bark out a call here. What a pet. One bounce pass going the length of the court. I mean, that's just beautiful. Austin White, the recipient of that. And man. Demarest had a man inside, but didn't think he can get it to him. Stackalinus shuffled the feet. It's almost like. John, he was waiting for the defense. Prep's defense has been tenacious this second half. Jonas was just waiting and, it, and shuffled the feet. Good call by the official. Look at this. His beer sing hit a three. I think that was his first shot. Here's some fast break action. Nice bounce pass. And then the tip by Austin White. I mean, it's just, it's not so. Here's the pass. I mean, that's just good stuff right there. See how you get so pepped up. Austin White this. Yeah. And now you're going to go back and play defense. You, 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 you're just happy to play defense now when you start making shots. And White with the 12 second half points. But really, Naja Hunter has been a big factor. He's got eight points, but the energy he's brought onto the floor. I was just going to say that he's so active, John. And, and good things are happening when he does that. He'll no timeouts remaining. St. Peter's with three. Each team now over the limit. And the arrow favors St. Peter's. So... You know, Gill 
you can see Morgan trying to manage this game all, yeah. along the way. Yeah, I have to say, I, I, I didn't realize they were out of timeouts. And I, I thought for sure he was going to call them before, but he didn't have any, you know. So he, he's, he's, he's that's tough now without timeouts. 2.15 left down five. So let's see how they go here. I, I would think he'd tell his team a couple plays in there, defensive, defensively and offensively, to, to keep their heads in the game, of course. Boy, he looks like he played a game over there. <laughs> well, he, he was talking about a little one-on-one -on -one pregame, so. Well, I'll tell you what, when we have a, a GSB game, I am not bringing my sneakers. He'll want to play. <laughs> he, oh, he, he was very serious. <laughs> you can see how much he loves the game, though. He just, oh. And he's, and all and these guys do. do. Yeah, right, you're right, John. Yeah. Singh had to take it away. Matola. And Austin White. Now, when you swipe down with two hands like that, it doesn't look good. I don't know if he fouled him or not, but... I, I, I back you up right there. Here's the steal. Well, look at his power right here. Take the ball away. And here comes Austin White from the back. And, yeah, I would say he got body and shoulder. And you're right, John. You go maybe one hand, you might get away with that. Two, you almost forced the official to call a foul. But give Austin White a lot of credit, though, to get back into the play after Veer Singh had it stolen away from him. It's all over the now eight points. Now Singh will step out now. He's not going far. No, it's a little offense defense. I should say, he, he, well, they're going through offense right now, but uh, that's a rest time, uh, break right there. Both free throws are good. Matola makes it a one-possession game. Still plenty of time left. A minute 48 to go. Steps out. He did. Yeah, he's trying to force the action, the young man. And Jordan Harris has to know where he is on the floor. And you beat double teams with passes. Defensive foul is going to be called on Maya. Yeah, I, I'm right in front of this play here, and that's a nice flop by Ryan. I should say Austin Roche just uh, really just didn't do much. Good acting, and it's a it's a tough tough call for the Knights. And seeing that he cannot believe it, he is stunned. Uh, and the way the ref's walking over, I think he knows. I mean, it wasn't even really direct contact, to be quite honest. No, but it was a, a non-call at best. And, and prepped the recipient of a pretty tough call right there. So a three-point game for St. Peter's. They get the ball on the inbound. And they still have two timeouts remaining. The possession arrow points in favor of St. Peter's as well. And there you go, the, the game reset. We are in a one-in-one -one situation. So still plenty of time left. It's a one-possession game. St. Peter's turned the ball over on their last possession. Yeah. And boy, I never thought St. Peter's had 47 points at this juncture in this game. Um, the way they started that first half, it is a tale of two tapes right there, boy. 15 points in the first half. They've scored 32 here in the second, and still time left. And that timeout gives Singh an extra 60 seconds or so to come back on the floor. Well, he's going to sleep well tonight. Ooh. Just, just thinking, I want to see how the refs call it from here. I just wonder if there'll be any type of makeup. And I, I know that's not in the rule book, but sometimes with a call like that, the refs have a tendency to give it back. But no, GSB foul, so Boston, uh, uh, White will go to the line to shoot one and one, right? Yep. That's a fourth foul on Maya. So certainly in the cards, and Gill's timeout to see if you can get the the steal. If not, when it crosses half court, commit the foul. Let's see if Prep can make free throws. White earns himself a second. Yeah, I'm surprised they fouled that early just because it's a one possession game. There's still time left. I know he has no timeouts, but it could be thinking three versus two, John. You know, they're a good three point shooting team. And They'll catch up if they start hitting threes against two free throws. It could be their philosophy. Yeah, he, he does think through right? the three. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's 
It's a very good point because he he sees the game from outside the arc. Matola was getting ready to line it up, so I think I think your your strategy was what he was going with. Yeah, and Matola, you have to have it first, and they have a quick release, but you have to have the basketball first. That's out of bounds. Well, that was a heck of a pass, but it's just too much. Just think if we were at Elizabeth High School, that ball would be out on Route 1 and 9 right now. That's, That's right. There's just so much room in that place. That could prove costly. We'll see, though. Still a five-point game. Down to a minute, ten to go. Demers for three. It's good. And let's see what Prep handles the pressure by Gill. They call a timeout. 13 points for Demarest. It's now a two-point game, so exactly as you had surmised. They're playing the three-for-two game. Yeah, they're going to foul. They might go for a quick steal. Here's a replay. Open three. I mean, Prep got caught with two guys on one and left the man open from outside. And there's your timeout off the pressure. So now timeout's really becoming a factor because you only have one left for St. Peter's and none, as we had stated before, for the Knights. Still in the one-and-one one for both teams. Prep with that all-important possession arrow with 61 seconds remaining. St. Peter's scored 15 points in the first half, and now they have 34 in the second half. So from a strategic standpoint, it seems as though you've been spot on with what Morgan is thinking foul worst case it's two free throws you stop the clock and you come back and you, you right. take a three right John I mean it's a two-point game so I think they have full court pressure the Knights come out full court pressure they try to get a steal and then it's just what they did last time if, if St. Peter's gets it across the half court line I think they hack them now Maya has four so he cannot commit that foul if he wants to stay in the game Pierre Lewis Austin White and the ball goes out of bounds. No foul with 54 seconds to go. And Prep did a great job of going against pressure. And they were not trying to be cute with it and hold the ball out. They tried to score. I give Todd Decker a lot of credit to maintaining his aggressiveness with the ball with the lead. And they have now used their final timeout. Boy, they... Gil St. Bernard's is very is, is very fortunate there. They were spread a lot, but no one cut to the middle of the basket to the rim. I think they would have got a layup, St. Peter's. You know, you pressure, you pressure. All four guys, all and the, not the guy in the ball. He's not pressuring just on the basketball there. But uh, Todd Decker might be throwing up a play maybe to get a layup here right at the rim. So both these teams, we should give them credit because you have four guys, four of the regular rotation of eight or nine for Gill, not here, not available right. today. And then on the other side, you've got a team that's been riddled with the flu. They're clearly not at 100%. And these two teams have battled through it. A little uh, spirit of 76 action as we come to you from Essex County College in Newark, New Jersey. Gill St. Bernard's and St. Peter's Prep. And they have put on a gutty show here. It hasn't always been a thing of beauty. John Hester and Michael Korn. But then again, uh, you and I aren't really a thing of beauty. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> we, we grit our way we, through things You here. have to. You have to. <laughs> and that's what these two ball clubs are doing. Give them credit. And uh, when I have another game with GSB, I'm bringing Coach Cena another shirt. Because he, he's going to need a shower after this thing. <laughs> he is working the sidelines over there. He does not need to do the Stairmaster or the treadmill, that's for sure. He's, he's got it covered in game. So no timeouts left for St. Peter's. They've got to hurry. Oh. And it is stolen by Demarest. Oh. And stolen right back. Sean Ryan, the freshman, takes it all the way. And a foul call. The break for St. Peter's. Yeah, Pierre Lewis got a little too cute with that. I mean, what? To, here, here, here comes the steal right here. Bang. Good hands. Push it up. Austin White does the right thing. Gives it to the young guard, Pierre Lewis. Watch out. Yeah, he just got a little bit too cute with the body and moving the ball away from his hand. Go up with, you know, go up strong with that thing. Unfortunately, the, the offense gets a rebound and gets fouled. 
Fourth. Jordan Whitehead will shoot here. And he makes the first. So it's still a one possession game. Here's the big free throw with 43 seconds. Neither team has a timeout. So this thing is going. I mean, Coach Zina talking to his guards. He, he has them with a play. Big free throws by Jordan Whitehead. A young man who was almost cut a few years ago, but kept on fighting and makes two big free throws here at the Newark National Invitational. Down the 38 seconds remaining. And even with the lead, preps, big defense going on right here. There's your screen by the big to loosen him up. Ryan with the steal. A little careless with the ball was the Knights, and they foul the freshman, Pierre Lewis. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a great defensive stand by St. Peter's. I mean, they pressure the ball full court, and they're very active in the half court, and they get another steal. Here comes the ball to set play. Defense collapse and a bad pass or a good defense. Take your pick. Freshman makes the thing first. St. Peter's making their free throws, which is major league. Two big free throws from the freshman. Six-point game down in 20 seconds to go. They want that three. Here is a three. It's good. They don't have any timeouts left. It's Harrison Tamara. And they'll foul Austin White with eight seconds to go. So still some life for Gill. Just That's a set play. Good dribble penetration. And there's your three. Oh. Number two, Austin White cleaning the shoes off. He's getting ready to shoot these free throws to try to put this thing away. Well, it's a double bonus, so he's going to get two free throws. But if he happens to miss, he could have an exciting ending. One and of the uh, have, yeah, it's night players is down by the water jug there. Might have taken an elbow or something. J.M. Maya. Maybe well, sick too, John. Yeah. You know, you know, just the flu bug been going around or whatever, and they opened a the trash can for him. That's a sign that maybe he's calling Ralph. <laughs> Hanging. Hoping to have to throw the defensive assignment of covering Veer Singh. Yeah. Big free throw by Austin White. Makes it a four point game. Major league right there. Made all four of his. Free throws down the stretch here. 55-50. Matola, no good. White. And a foul is called with a 1.4 left. And one of those inadvertent whistles, I think. Good. And for all intents, this thing's over. And yeah, Morgan just told his, his team to back yeah, off. Just back off. It's, they played well. Both teams played well. What a difference a half makes. St. Peter's outscores Gill 40 to 25 after being knocked around in the first half 25 15. And they squeak it out. So that'll do it from Essex County College. St. Peter's wins it by five. For Michael Korn and the rest of the Verizon Fios One sports team, I'm John Hester saying thank you so much for watching. You've been watching the Newark National Invitational brought to you by Verizon Fios One, the Star Ledger, and NJ.com. This has been a special presentation of Verizon Fios One Sports. Listen carefully. First American Student Aid can now help consolidate your federal student loan. That's right. First American Student Aid can help lower your monthly payment on federal government student loans. Call us today and let us review your situation and work towards consolidating your federal student loans. In many cases, we can lower your monthly payments in half or more. 
It doesn't matter how much you owe, how far behind you are on payments, or even if you're in default on your federal student loans. Just call us right now to find out how we can lower your payment in half immediately. And find out how we could stop the harassing phone calls, stop the wage garnishments, and even stop the tax liens. We'll remove your default status, consolidate your federal student loans, lower your student repayments, and stop wage garnishments today. Stop worrying. Call us now. We can help. Call the number on your screen today to find out how we can help. Did you see they killed off last night? Wait, no, no, I still need to get him. Did it. Got him twice in the head. Oh, yeah. Guys, you want to see get shot by yeah. No. Oof. Oh. Don't let others spoil the hottest shows and movies. See them first when you get premium channels like Showtime for 50% off for 12 months. Visit channel 860 to order now. How about what happened all? Oh, let's watch that again. Yeah. yeah. Keeping up with the entertainment that's got everyone talking. That's powerful. New Jersey, you like us. You really like us. They like me. They like me. When you like Fios One on Facebook, you can become part of our family. When you like us, you'll get important news and weather updates. And when you like us, you'll be the first to know about everything going on in your community. Plus, you can answer our question of the day. Like us, New Jersey. They like me. They like me. Fios One News. We like you. Now go like us on Facebook. Welcome to Push Pause. The show that tells the story of your neighborhood. Meet the people. See the places. Hear the stories. And make up your community on Push Pause. Push Pause. Freezing the frame on local life. Freezing the frame on local life. Freezing the frame on local life. On push pause. The New York, New Jersey Super Bowl host committee and the NFL have partnered with Verizon and the Broadway Green Alliance to collect and recycle electronic waste in New Jersey. Well, it's very important to show the green aspects and importance uh, to the Super Bowl as well as to Verizon. It's great to have opportunities like this to let the employees, uh, residents, local businesses all be involved and get rid of some of their electronics and recycle them responsibly. The recycling events are open to the public and are part of the... anything IT site. So it's a good opportunity again for the public to be involved and get some of those electronics out of the local landfills. Well this is equipment that, that has been at Verizon for instance. These are old ThinkPad AC adapters that we've received from